Hello there and welcome back. A little while ago I bought myself a Bostic hot glue gun and this thing's one of the larger models. Um, it is kit number 209 and the gun is model 207 and it takes your 10 inch or your 4 inch glue sticks. Um, I like it a lot because it has a fairly large grip on it because I have large hands and um, it came with some nozzles and um, it was missing the wrench to take the nozzles off so there are some accessories that I have for the gun that I plan on making a holder slash dispenser with some storage in it so I think that's going to work out good and they advertise this as being able to stand uh, on its own which it does but when you're using it you put it down it has a tendency to shake and sometimes it actually falls and uh, that's not good another thing is that when I go to grab the gun from the table there's not a, really not enough room for my hand to get underneath the gun so I, I if it was elevated a little bit I can grab this gun a lot easier and use it quicker if I had uh, kind of like a holster or a holder so we're going to see how that works. Um, I do have my materials here. It's poplar left over from a project. I've got a one inch dowel and a five eighth inch dowel. And I'm going to use those for dispensing the glue sticks. Let's see how this works out. Hang in there. All right, we're here in SketchUp again. And I just wanted to show you the uh, inside of my dispenser. I've got a dowel. Uh, that's dispensing the glue sticks much like what you see in the restaurants with the toothpick dispenser and um, We've got here a drawer for storage of the accessories for the glue gun. We also have uh, an elevated angled um, Holder here, which is going to let me get my hand underneath there easily. I need still need to locate the metal tray I think I'm gonna go down to a local hobby shop and see if they have something for me there but yeah, this is just the start of it. Um, as I build it, I'll find uh, a place where I could store the tool and the cord when this is not in use. Most likely it's gonna be hanging from the wall. There's gonna be some kind of a hook on this end here or uh, even a magnet um, will work on my metal cabinet. And just to show you what it looks like um, with everything together, I'm just going to unhide the side here. There you go. But we'll see how it goes. Stay tuned. So I went ahead and made a cut list. I'm pretty much going to spare you guys all of the cuts, but uh, long story short, cut everything, planed everything, and eventually I had all my pieces together here. And I identified them for good measure. Now I'm planing the lid of the dispenser. It's important that I put the finger pull in the right position so I'm getting the exact thickness of the front and I'm drilling that hole now. Here I'm measuring up the dispenser dowel and giving myself a little bit more room so that I could work with it with the router. I'm setting up a clamping jig for this dowel. Finding a center of a circle is not always that easy, but this method seems to work for me. This is the most pivotal point of the project. If I can't get this centered, it's not going to work because the margin for error is low. Now I'm just measuring out the handle to the dispenser. This is a dangerous part. I had to set the straight bit to where I have only a half an inch for the glue stick depth. And then I had to route all the way down until there was a fourth of an inch left on that dowel. It was pretty much a rough uh, route at that. So I used these tools from Duragrit to clean things up a bit. This is the 9 inch carbide flat sander. There's about a 60 grit on one end and 120 grit on the other. To even up the bottom and clean this dowel out, I used the 1 4 square carbide file. So 
Seems to be working just fine. Here's where this project is going to make or break you. The key is to get that glue stick to roll perfectly into the dowel. So now I have to get these holes perfectly aligned. One side is shorter than the other, so that makes it kind of challenging, but I'm headed over to the drill press to take care of things. I decided to use a standard drill bit to establish the center of the two holes. Using an old drill press is challenging. I'm trying to drill a fourth of an inch below the surface without a stop. And on the other side as well. This is the 5 8 inch hole that goes through one side. In order for it to spin smoothly, I need to put a chamfer on this dowel. I'm now making a round sander for that 5 8 inch hole. I'll occasionally check this to make sure it's spinning smoothly. Now I'm going to go ahead and finish the side where the drawer is going to go on to. I'm getting the back measurements so that I could correctly measure the ramp. Now I'm finding the right angle for that miter cut. Yes, I know I forgot to lower the blade for this cut. Perfect. Now I'm writing out the grooves for the lid to go into. Very important that I do not put glue around that cylinder. So the next one of these that I make, these are going to be routed out so that these pieces could fit in easily and I could glue this properly. Checking that cylinder again, making sure it spins freely. Testing this out, looks pretty good. And I'm making sure everything is square.
So as I clamp this and it's glued up, it's getting a little stiffer, so I'm making sure we get some sandpaper and uh, tone it down a little bit. This is the back of the dispenser. Testing it yet again. I'm cutting up the knob to the handle. It's now time to cut the handle to size and I'm using the DuraGrid carbide cutting and shaping wheel. The good thing about this tool is that you can also shape from the front of it. Now I'm just taking some measurements for the drawer. Just cutting out the bottom of the drawer and planting it down to size. Taking a measurement for the bottom groove of the drawer. This has got to be the smallest drawer I've ever made. I decided to do butt joints because this drawer is really not going to get that much use.
And I guess I miscalculated the drawer bottom. It is still a little too thick. Here I'm cutting out the grooves for the drawer guides. Taking a measurement for the drawer guides now. Measuring the distance from the bottom of the door to the middle so that I could transfer that to the actual box. And it looks like it fits. I'm giving myself a half inch border so that I could do the round over on the base. Just giving myself some centering lines for the dispenser. Gluing up the glue stick catch. Almost everything got a round over in this project. Now I'm 
drilling out the hole for the magnet. I'm starting to shape the holder now. Now I'm just getting a feel for the right angle. Getting ready to cut out the holder stand. Very important that I have the right height. This is a very weird angle for a glue up, so I decided to put a Craig screw and I'm drilling out a countersink now. At this point, I had to be very careful not to damage this box during the roundover process. And now, since I put a roundover on this dispenser box, I have to get the right curvature for the glue stick catcher.
need a little sanding. There's a trick I'm sure you all know, but if you take the actual wood piece against where you're trying to apply it to and sand it, it'll form to that shape. And it worked. Now I'm just shaping out the base and the design that I wanted. I wanted to do a very large dovetail and I decided to put a hole in the end of that. Giving the base a round over now. Finding the center so that I could drill that one and one fourth inch hole. I'm almost done, just applying some stain. Just gluing the dispenser box to the base. Glue in that glue stick catcher. Staining the rest of the pieces here. Putting some epoxy for the magnet.
So being that this is mine, I'm just putting glue and a screw, but I'm sure that we can do a interchangeable holder for different sizes of glue sticks. I'm now shaping out the cord hooks. I'm scuffing the surface now to glue the cord hooks on the dispenser. I'm using Deft Spray-On Lacquer. It does a really good job. Well, it's finally done. And I think that it turned out okay. Um, it's rather handy. And um, there were some late minute additions during the build. I'm sure that happens to everybody. Um, they eventually need something uh, different or a little extra. I think where I added the extra was the hanging hole, which I'll get into later, and the hooks for the cord right here. Anyways, um, the dispenser is, is great. I mean, I was lucky. Um, I think SketchUp really helps because when you design things in SketchUp initially, it kind of takes a lot of the bugs and those question marks out of your project. In this case, it was the dispenser. Um, I had never made anything quite like this before. So um, without further ado, I'm going to show you how it works. So the dispenser holds roughly 30 glue sticks and they're placed in here. And as you saw in the build, there's a ramp going down. So it's gravity fed. And um, at the turning point here, you can go either direction. I find that moving uh, forward with this nozzle works good. So there's one. Uh, in hindsight, I think that I made this a little small for the reach. So I find that when it drops, I'll just go from the side and pick it up. But it's functional, it works. One of my concerns was if this was consistent, and um, I think it is. Just gotta find your starting point, and then you uh, have a consistent uh, feed here. There's three in a row, uh, and, it's, and it's done that since I built it. So I worked out the angle, and it seems to be good um, I like the elevation. It allows me to get my hand in here and get a nice grip and so that I could take it out when I'm done, just put it back. It works good for me. The original plans that I had had a drawer which is one inches wide, which is kind of funny. So I redesigned it and made the drawer a lot wider. So it's about five inches wide, four inches deep, and one inch high, a little over one inch high. But 
For now, I just got some of the nozzles that came with the gun. Uh, there's plenty of room in here. You could put more glue sticks if you want um, or accessories for the glue gun. Loading the glue sticks is pretty much straightforward. Just slide the top in and roll them down the ramp here. And the maximum capacity, uh, as I said earlier, is a little over 30. As I stated earlier, I was going to get more into the hole and how that came about. Um, this primarily is for hanging on the wall, but it also is for cord management. Um, a lot of times when you're dealing with soldering irons or, you know, glue guns, uh, the cord tends to uh, get in the way of, of what you're doing. So uh, by putting a cord in the hole and you using it this way, the cord stays away from your work area and it um, keeps it nice and out of the way of what you're doing. Couldn't quite find the tray that I wanted for this um, build, but I went to my local hobby shop and just got one of those glass jar lids and it's working out just fine. Um, I put a magnet in here so that you can take this and replace it if it gets too uh, damaged uh, or you can go and you can clean it, you know, so when you're done, just put it right in there. It's also nice that instead of it having it fixed, if you have different sizes of glue guns, you can shift it forward, you can shift it back, you know, and, and kind of customize it. So I've set up sort of a mock wall just to show you the features of it being stored away when not in use. As I said before, the primary reason for the hole was, of course, to put it on the wall. But there's another secret about the hole. And that's, what am I going to do when it's not in use? And where am I going to put the tool? So after calculating the height, the angle, and the position of the hole, this is what I came up with. It stores with the tool when not in use. And of course, the cord wraps on the cord hooks and you're good to go. One of the cool things is that the box was designed to open from the top so the glue sticks won't come out. If I had the drawer opening from the bottom over time it might slip open and then there goes your glue sticks. And just briefly, I just want to go over some of the features of having a glue gun holder. I'm not saying that all your woodworkers are going to have one of these things. I would say that the target audience would be uh, people that make crafts and things of that nature. Uh, but some of the features that I'd like to point out is that uh, the dispenser makes it fun to get the glue sticks and it's always nice to have fun while you're working. With the metal lid, you don't have a glue uh, mess on your bench. Um, it falls directly into the lid. You can remove the lid, clean it, and it's just fine. Now, with a holder or a holster, uh, you won't be having the trouble of the gun burning your surface or tipping over, as I mentioned before, um, and no burns on your hands. One of the things that I like about this is that everything is together. You have the storage for your accessories. You have the glue sticks. You have the glue gun. Everything is here, everything that you need is here to do whatever you need to do. And instead of just making a shop tool and throwing stuff together, you know, this is made out of some nice hardwood. It's got a nice stain on it and um, it's easy on the eyes. So, I mean, those are all pluses in my book and um, I'm really happy with this build. I hope you enjoyed the video and by all means, if you want to see more, just subscribe. And uh, if you want to see the last project that I did, it's going to be right up here. And if you want to go ahead and subscribe, it's going to be right over here. All right, then. I'll see you later.